comes to mind when you hear the word dinosaur? Perhaps the iconic T-Rex from Jurassic Park? Of course, this widely popular image is both memorable and impressive. But it's not the only way you can picture a dinosaur. What about this little guy? It's lighter than an ostrich feather. The males weigh on average 1.9 grams, 0.07 ounces, while the females 2.6 grams, 0.09 ounces. Their hearts beat 300 to 500 times per minute. This isn't just any bird, as you might have thought, but the smallest of the currently living descendants of dinosaurs known to science, the bee hummingbird. All right, so we've got familiar with the smallest dinosaurs. What about the biggest ones? That's where things get tricky. Scientists disagree on which dinosaurs can be considered the largest, leading to heated debates from time to time. We've looked into this issue and came up with a special list just for you. Top 5 Largest Dinosaurs. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more fascinating episodes. We know that the largest living animal is the blue whale, weighing about 136 metric tons and growing to over 30 meters, 98 feet long. It's also the largest animal that has ever lived. But blue whales live in the ocean, where conditions differ from those on land. Then what about the largest land animal? Today, elephants hold this prestigious title. But if we travel back in history, we encounter even more colossal giants, the dinosaurs. Hop into our time machine, and off we go. In general, dinosaurs varied greatly in weight and size. They could weigh from a few grams to tens and even hundreds of metric tons. Moreover, it's worth noting that their sizes changed depending on the time period. Dinosaurs lived on Earth during the Triassic, Early Jurassic, Late Jurassic, and Cretaceous periods, collectively comprising the Mesozoic era. It is believed that they reached their largest sizes during the Cretaceous period. Theropod dinosaurs were the most common predators of the Mesozoic. An interesting parallel emerges when comparing the weight of dinosaurs versus modern carnivorous mammals. The latter usually weigh between 10 and 100 kilograms, 22 to 220 pounds, while the former from 100 to 1,000 kilograms, 220 to 2,200 pounds. Interestingly, the largest dinosaurs weren't predators at all. You are about to see this for yourself. But let's clear something up first. Scientists will probably never be able to say with 100% certainty which dinosaur species was the largest. This is because very few dinosaur remains have fossilized. Most of these remains will either never be discovered or have already been accidentally destroyed. It's exceptionally rare to find relatively complete skeletons. Even less often, scientists discover prints of skin and other soft tissue. Reconstructing the muscles and organs of many dinosaur species, as well as estimating their appearance and weight, presents a major challenge, even today. But it's not completely impossible. Today, researchers use the laser scanning method to overlay virtual skin onto known or presumed skeletons. In this way, Modern technology allows us to at least approximately identify the most gigantic dinosaurs. Now, let's move on to the first highlight of our journey. Here, you'll see dinosaurs ranked fifth among the largest of their kind. Their sheer size may take your breath away. Sora Poseidon. Imagine a bone weighing three metric tons. That's how much a block containing one of four vertebrae weighed when it was excavated from a farm in Oklahoma in 1994. 
researchers needed a tractor to transport it. Initially, these fossils were deemed too massive for any animal and were mistaken for petrified tree trunks. As you will see, there have been a few similar misidentification cases in dinosaur research history. What kind of animal could such huge vertebrae belong to? Their owner was Saura Poseidon, a genus of sauropods, large four-legged dinosaurs that lived during the Jurassic and Cretaceous periods and are known from a few incomplete fossilized skeletons. The name Saura Poseidon comes from the Greek words Sauros, meaning lizard, and Poseidon, the god of the sea in ancient Greek mythology, who also controlled earthquakes. The name hints that the weight of sauropods was so great that they literally shook the earth as they walked. But let's get back to those bones. The vertebrae were kept until 1999 when they were handed over to American paleontologist Matt Waddell for analysis. In 2000, the researcher officially published his findings. As a result, some sources mistakenly called Sauroposeidon the largest dinosaur in the history of dinosaur studies. Consider this. Its head and elongated neck could reach 16.5 to 18 meters. 54 to 59 feet, which is equivalent to a six-story building, making it one of the tallest known dinosaurs, perhaps even the tallest. However, there is no evidence suggesting that Sauroposeidon held its neck strictly vertically. This would have put a considerable load on its heart. According to one theory, it held its neck and head horizontally parallel to the ground. All right, but what about overall body length? The dinosaurs were 27 to 34 meters, 89 to 112 feet long, with shoulder length of 6 to 7 meters, 20 to 23 feet, and weighed 40 to 60 metric tons. However, sauropods likely had a system of air sacs, similar to those in modern birds, serving several important functions. Regulating body temperature, filling their lungs with air, and changing body density during swimming and diving. They also reduced body weight due to bone cavities, which means that sauropods might have been 20% lighter than assumed. In 2012, numerous other sauropod remains, previously identified under different names for decades, were reclassified under the genus Sauroposeidon. These encompassed sauropod bones and tracks, including partial skeletons that have long been found in the Poloxi River region of Texas. Interestingly, in the mid-1980s, students at the University of Texas at Austin discovered a bone bed on a ranch in Hood County. However, excavation stopped in 1987 and only resumed in 1993. All sauropod remains from this site appear to belong to the same genus. Some parts of a skull were discovered in the quarry, including the left upper jaw and teeth. Also, a part of the neck with seven vertebrae, 13 backbone vertebrae, and 30 tail vertebrae, as well as samples of all limb and girdle bones, except for some front and hind leg bones. Considering their long necks, you may have imagined sauropods as somewhat odd creatures for their time, akin to modern-day giraffes, but that's not the case. They were a very large group that first appeared in the early Jurassic period and soon spread all over the world. Seroposidons inhabited areas of tropical and subtropical forests, near river deltas, coastal swamps, bays, and lagoons. Few creatures in the animal kingdom dared to attack adult Seroposidons, but the young were probably hunted by groups of predatory dinosaurs from the Carnosaur clad. Sauroposeidons were herbivores. Their long necks most likely allowed them to eat leaves from the tops of magnolias, palms, and sycamores. But some theories suggest that due to the inability to hold their necks vertically, Sauroposeidons might have fed on vegetation that was growing on lower levels. How much food do you think this little one might need per day to stay healthy? As a matter of fact, a whole ton. Yep, 
It was a real leaf processing factory. However, one clash of the dinosaurs episode on the Discovery Channel mentioned that young Sauroposeidons attained their massive size by eating insects and small mammals. But this boldly contradicts the widely accepted theory. Today, there is absolutely no evidence to suggest that sauropods were even partially carnivorous. It's only speculated that prosauropods, their distant Triassic ancestors, might have been omnivorous. Scientists don't know exactly how sauroposeidons moved, but by comparing them with other large, short-legged sauropods, they concluded that they were amongst the slowest dinosaurs. As you can see, we don't know much about this species, and most of the information was extrapolated from comparing them with more well-known auropods. Now, let's briefly go back to modern times. Imagine two London buses standing one behind the other. That's how long our next character was. And here it is, the Dreadnoughtus, a genus of titanosaurian sauropod containing a single species, Dreadnoughtus shrani. Shrani is in honor of American entrepreneur Adam Schran for his financial support of the study. The name Dreadnought means fearing nothing or fearless. It was chosen by Drexel University paleontologist Kenneth Lacavara, who discovered the species. The animal's virtual invulnerability due to its size reminded scientists of early 20th century large steel battleships. The dinosaur is known from two partial skeletons discovered in the Patagonian cliffs of Argentina in the Upper Cretaceous rocks, which are about 70 to 76 million years old. These are the most complete skeletons compared to other giant titanosaurs. Scientists have about 70% of the bones needed to fully describe the creature. From these remains, it is reliably known that the dreadnought was one of the largest terrestrial vertebrates. Based on the skeletons, the total length of its body was about 26 meters, 85 feet, and it weighed 48 to 49 metric tons. And if you look at the body parts, the tail reached 9 meters, 30 feet, and the elongated neck, 11 meters, 36 feet. That is, the neck was almost half the length of the animal. Wait, but then Sara Poseidon is larger, you might say. But here is an important clarification. The specimen had the features of a juvenile individual. That is, the dreadnought was supposed to grow even larger, and no one knows how big it could become. Hang on, but how did scientists know that the dreadnought remains they found were teenagers? All young vertebrates have so-called growth zones in their bones, cartilaginous epiphyseal plates. In adults, they are overgrown with normal bone tissue. However, this doesn't apply to reptiles because they grow throughout life, albeit it's much more pronounced in their youth. Also, the bone cells or osteones have a rather round shape in young dinosaurs, while they are more elongated in the mature ones. So the paleontologists found unfused bones in the shoulders of the dreadnoughts they discovered. And they also had many round osteones. This suggested that the dinosaurs were actively growing at the time of death. Due to the large size of bones and the remoteness of the discovery site, it took four years to completely excavate them. In 2009, the fossils were transported to Philadelphia on an ocean freighter for study. They were studied at Drexel University and the Carnegie Museum of Natural History. And in 2015, the remains were returned to Argentina, where they are permanently stored in the Padre Molina Museum in Rio Gallegos. The bones of both dreadnought specimens were scanned using a 3D laser scanner. This helped field paleontologist Locavera study the fossils in the safest way possible without damaging their structure. The animal's weight was determined based on the circumference of the humerus and femur. Using this formula, it would have weighed 59.3 metric tons. That means the dreadnought would have been more than eight and a half times heavier than a male African elephant, and several tons heavier than a Boeing 737-900 airliner. However, 
this weight estimate was criticized for being exaggerated. Matt Waddell, already known to us from the study of Sauroposeidon, calculated the weight of this dinosaur to be between 36 and 40 metric tons. Another researcher, Gregory Paul, using methods based on more accurate skeletal restoration, suggested that the dinosaur weighed only 26 metric tons. But all these estimates were ultimately considered inaccurate. A few years ago, in 2020, two studies estimated that the dreadnought's mass at 48 to 49 metric tons. As you can see, the question of the dreadnought's size is highly debatable. When we look at one species, and it appears to weigh 20 times more than another species, maybe what we're really looking at is an individual that is simply 30 years older than the other animal," said Dr. Lacovara. In terms of proportions, Dreadnought's forelimbs were longer than those of any other previously known titanosaur, although they were still not much longer than the hind limbs, and the neck was presumably held horizontally. Scientists believe that their diet was no different from that of other sauropods. They consumed a large amount of plants, using their long necks to reach food. Why did they die? Most theories suggest that they were quickly and deeply buried, hence the good preservation of the skeletons. Apparently, there was a catastrophic flood. The waters broke through a natural dam, turning the ground into a muddy mess, and the two dinosaurs were buried in an eroded crevice. What else made the discovery of the Dreadnoughtus particularly special? Well, it helped to calculate the bone strengths of dinosaurs and the maximum mass they could withstand. From there, it's a short step to modeling this sauropod's breathing, blood pressure, and dietary needs. Now, let's move on to our next hero, a true titan, who was discovered completely by accident, and again in Argentina. A shepherd from a ranch in southern Argentina stumbled upon giant bones while herding sheep. The ranch owner, Oscar Mayo, reached out to paleontologists, and scientists began excavations. During excavations in 2012, 2013, and 2015, they uncovered hundreds of bones from at least six long-necked and long-tailed dinosaurs. To be precise, 200 fossils were discovered including 130 sauropod bones and 57 teeth of theropod carnivorous dinosaurs. Among the finds were bones that belonged to a previously unknown species. This time, the world learned about the Paddocotitans, or more precisely, Paddocotitan Maiorum, meaning Patagodian Titan of the Mayo family. The dinosaur earned this name because its bones were excavated at the La Flecha Ranch owned by the Mayo family, and titanium refers to the dinosaur's strength and large size. Patagotitan started making headlines back in 2014, even before its bones were fully unearthed. The discovered parts of its neck, back, tail, and limbs were enough to understand. The world had never seen such a dinosaur before. British broadcaster and naturalist David Attenborough referred to it in his documentary. In 2016, the American Museum of Natural History dedicated an exhibition to it. According to Smithsonian Magazine, the giant was over 37 meters, 127 feet long, and weighed more than 70 metric tons, meaning it was longer than a blue whale and weighed more than a dozen African elephants. Its femur alone was 2.4 meters, 7.9 feet long. Later studies claimed that Patagotitan was up to 31 meters, 102 feet long, and weighed about 50 to 57 metric tons. The dinosaur was most likely an herbivore and lived in a wooded area dominated by coniferous species. For some time, no official description of the dinosaur's bones was released so that other experts could verify whether it was really the largest land animal ever, as the newspapers claimed. But in 2017, 
paleontologist Jose Carballido from the Paleontological Museum Egidio Ferruglio and his colleagues finally published details about this giant. But Matt Waddell, who has been working on some major dinosaur projects and has been following the titanosaur Patacotitan since 2014, was not impressed by the study. According to his estimates, this dinosaur cannot be considered the largest. Moreover, he believed that the main part of the article didn't include some important bone measurements. Be that as it may, Patagotitan joined the club of giant dinosaurs. The reconstructed skeleton was exhibited at the American Museum of Natural History in New York. But this is not the only place where you can witness this giant. Skeletons recreated based on the found bones of Patagotitan are displayed in many museums. The oldest remains were 101 million years old. The animals most likely died in three different floods. But this is just one theory. There is another. The fact is that the dinosaur remains were found in one place, but in different paleontological layers. Therefore, the researchers assumed that there was a lake where animals came to drink. Perhaps it dried up during a drought, and the dinosaurs died of thirst at different times. What can you tell from four vertebrae? As it turns out, it's enough to recreate an entire dinosaur if these are well-preserved neck, back, and tail vertebrae, even though they constitute just 3% of the skeleton. Based on them, scientists learned a lot about another massive sauropod, Puertosaurus, a member of the titanosaurs. The dinosaur was named Puertosaurus reuli in honor of the two researchers who discovered the remains and worked on them, Pablo Puerta and Santiago Reyul. The previously mentioned scanty remains were also found in Argentina in the Santa Cruz province in southern Patagonia in 2001. It was determined that they date back to the late Cretaceous period, between 70 and 76 million years ago. Like all sauropods, Puertosaurus was an herbivore. Petrified tree trunks were found not far from the vertebrae, which suggests that this dinosaur lived in the forest. While scientists today have great capabilities, they are not limitless. So it's impossible to determine the exact size of the animal from just four vertebrae. Nonetheless, it was suggested that it was 30 meters, 98 feet long, and weighed 50 metric tons. There were many other assumptions. The dinosaur was given a maximum length of 35 to 40 meters, 115 to 131 feet, and a weight ranging from 80 to 100 metric tons. The overall size can be extrapolated from the largest discovered vertebrae, the dorsal one, which is the only one that remains intact. It is 1.1 meters, 3.6 feet high, and 1.7 meters, 5.6 feet wide making it the widest known sauropod vertebrae. By the way, Puertosaurus became the first giant titanosaur found with a cervical vertebrae. And it was a particularly large one. Its transverse width is 140 centimeters, 55 inches, and it's believed to be the ninth vertebrae. In 2013, Mike Taylor and Matt Waddell estimated the length of Puertosaurus's neck to be about 9 meters, 30 feet. Scientists believe it was long, thick, and flexible. Presumably, it had wide cervical ribs and thick, short nerve processes. Finally, the two caudal vertebrae from the middle of the tail are of a standard shape for titanosaurs, with a concave anterior part and a convex posterior part. However, little is known about them yet, as they have not been described in detail. Thus, our hero had a solid build, a massive torso, and seemingly large lungs that pumped significant volumes of oxygen. Also, to carry a body weighing tens, if not 100 tons, Puertosaurus must have had powerful muscular legs. The vertebrae's size and shape suggest that it had the widest rib cage among all titanosaurs. It was approximately 5.8 meters, 16.4, 26.2 feet wide. To put this into perspective, many modern American school corridors 
are 4.9 meters, 16 feet wide, and the classroom size is 9 by 9 meters, 30 by 30 feet. Imagine this giant, whose chest was the size of an entire classroom, moving at an estimated speed of 12.2 kilometers per hour, 7.6 miles per hour. That's one and a half times as fast as a human can walk, but about half the top speed of a modern Komodo dragon. It was most likely one of the slowest dinosaurs. According to scientists, Huertosauruses were relatively peaceful herbivores. They ate all types of vegetation. Thanks to their flexible necks, these dinosaurs could reach high branches behind their heads instead of having to turn their entire body. They likely could also stand on their hind legs to reach the very tops of trees that were unreachable to other animals. Therefore, in all fairness, there was no need for Puertosaurus to run fast. Their best defenses against predators were size and strength. In extreme cases, they could make use of their long neck, tail, and massive legs, which could certainly shake the ground. Moreover, Puertosaurus probably moved in herds, which provided even better protection. That is, fighting them would be like fighting an entire mountain range. These herds most likely stayed in one place for a long time, eating everything within reach. At that time, the climate was rainy and humid, so Puertosaurs most likely lived in dense forests. This provided them with an almost endless food supply, enough for both them and the Dreadnoughtus giants who lived alongside them. But Puertosaurus eggs, as well as their young, old, sick, or injured individuals, could be in danger. Theropod Orcoraptor, which reached 9 meters, 30 feet in length, and weighed up to 1.5 tons, posed a particular threat. Their teeth were perfect for tearing flesh. Pertosaurus evolved during the late Cretaceous and, along with similar titanosaurs, marked the culmination of this line of evolution. It went extinct 55 million years ago during the late Cretaceous mass extinction event that ended the era of dinosaurs. And now we are approaching the last point of our journey, the habitat of dinosaurs, which many paleontologists consider the largest in history. They are also possibly the longest animals of all time, although we don't yet have indisputable evidence to support any of these claims. How was it discovered? Things just happen by accident, as they always do. In 1987, a farm owned near the town of Plaza Huincal in Argentina found what is presumed to be a dinosaur's fibula on his property. The man decided that he had discovered a piece of petrified wood and reported it to the local museum. Museum employees dug it up and exhibited the fibula in one of their halls. Two years later, Argentine paleontologist Jose Bonaparte organized more extensive excavations at the site resulting in the discovery of additional bones from the same dinosaur. Eventually, scientists unearthed seven dorsal vertebrae, the lower part of the sacrum, some sacral ribs and part of a dorsal rib. These finds were exhibited in the same museum. Bonaparte presented them at a scientific conference in San Juan in 1989. The detailed description authored by Bonaparte and Argentine paleontologist Rodolfo Correa was published four years later in 1993. It was then that the herbivorous dinosaur received its name, Argentinosaurus huancalensis. The first part meant Argentinian lizard, and the second referred to the city of Plaza Huincal, which is close to the discovery site. Despite being known only from fragmentary remains, many scientists consider the Argentinosaurus to be the largest dinosaur and possibly the longest animal ever. It was 30 to 35 meters, 98 to 115 feet long, and weighed 65 to 80 metric tons, according to some estimates, and 80 to 100 metric tons, according to others. However, data from 2013 suggests it was 39.7 meters, 130 feet long, and 7.3 meters, 24 feet high at the shoulders. 
Yet again, due to the incompleteness of the remains, its exact size is difficult to estimate. Like other titanosaurs, Argentinosaurus likely had 10 dorsal vertebrae, and they were huge. One of the dorsal ones was estimated to be 159 centimeters high, 63 inches, and 129 centimeters, 51 inches wide. Argentinosaurus reached full size in about 15 to 40 years. Their distinguishing features, as with other sauropods, were a small head, a long, narrow tail, and an extremely long, thick neck. However, it's unclear how Argentinosaurus held its neck. It likely resembled how a giraffe moves its neck. That is, they could hold their necks in a way that allowed them to eat from tall trees, bend down to drink water, and maneuver to eat leaves between large branches. These giants also had thick trunk-like legs with rounded feet that helped distribute weight. Scientists came up with an ingenious way to calculate the size of Argentinosaurus. They compare available fragments of those of smaller related sauropods known from more complete remains. Scientists take into account the proportions between different parts of the skeleton. This ratio is then extrapolated on the available Argentinosaurus fragments. This provides a general idea of the dinosaur's size, but can't be considered an accurate reconstruction. The weight is determined based on the known ratio between specific bones and body weight. Paleontologists were able to estimate not only the overall size of Argentinosaurus, but also the parameters of its separate body parts. Thus, according to their estimate from 1994, the length of the hind limbs was 4.5 meters, 15 feet. The length of the body from hip to shoulder was 7 meters, 23 feet. And the total body length was 30 meters, 98 feet. One hypothesis suggests that Argentinosaurus had a shorter tail and a narrower chest than Puertosaurus. But then it would have been smaller itself. However, subsequent research has disproven this. Another theory argues that some diplodocids, such as Supersaurus and Diplodotus, may have been longer than Argentinosaurus, although they were significantly less massive. And we already know the advantage of large size. Few predators dared to challenge this giant. Yet even Argentinosaurus was hunted, and by none other than Mapusaurus, one of the largest known theropods reaching five tons. How could they take down such a giant? They are known from at least seven individuals found together, so Mapusaurus likely hunted in packs. Actually, in this case, the large size was the only advantage Argentinosaurus had, because it couldn't run away from them. Like our previous characters, it was very slow. A computer model of the skeleton and muscles showed that Argentinosaurus at a top speed of 7 kilometers per hour, 5 miles per hour. Before computer modeling, a dinosaur's speed could only be estimated by studying its tracks and anatomy. Scientists determined their muscle properties by comparing them to those of living animals. As a result, the digital Argentinosaurus learned to walk. Most likely, the animal had a gait in which the front and hind legs on one side of the body moved simultaneously. As we have already mentioned, Argentinosauruses were herbivores and ate leaves from trees and shrubs. To maintain their considerable mass, they had to eat 553 to 576 kilograms, 1220 to 1269 pounds of vegetation per day. We're sure you would agree that this is quite a whopper. Thus, in a short time, several Argentinosauruses could devour an entire forest of trees. This caused significant damage to the local flora. But, of course, one can't even compare it to the damage from the catastrophe that wiped out not only the flora, but also the Argentinosauruses themselves, and indeed, all dinosaurs. It is known that they died out as a result of the Cretaceous-Paleogene extinction event at the end of the Cretaceous period. It occurred about 66 million years ago. 
Scientists are still arguing about what caused it. But the main theory involves a giant asteroid landing near Mexico. This led to a sharp rise in temperature, killing many animals. It also caused massive destruction, shock waves, forest fires, tsunamis, volcanic eruptions, deadly acid rain, and earthquakes. And then came a years-long winter that cooled down the planet. Ironically, those who had dominated the Earth and evolved here for about 174 million years couldn't survive it. Some say that dinosaurs began to die out about 70 million years ago. However, they might have been able to bounce back. But the asteroid had other plans. <laughs>